Every Neighborhood Partnership started about eight years ago and it was, uh, there was a group of volunteers uh, that got together and it was really a, they wanted to serve a school and so it was three different churches and three different groups that decided to serve elementary schools and just do some programming. Um, the point was like, let's be active and let's volunteer and give back. You know, eight years ago Fresno Unified was in a tough spot. so. Um, attendance and grades and just there's not a lot of green space um, and so they would take any help that they, they could yeah. get. So a group got together and said this is a great idea what has happened here at Susan B at uh, a couple of their elementary schools other groups could do this so we could we could mobilize the city um, and tackle some of the issues that we see in our city um, and use the school system kind of as the vehicle for it. So, uh, you know, if you think about, we want to change the city, that sounds awesome, but that's really grandiose, and how do you do that? And so what these, you know, what EMP started was, let's break down the city into these little blocks, these little grids that are the elementary schools. There's 90 different elementary schools in Fresno, the city limits. And so if we just broke those down and said we're going to tackle them one neighborhood at a time. And so that ranges from a sports program on the weekend to class and volunteering, um, to parents kind of being mobilized to take care of their own school and, and give back. If you look at all the statistics and everything is going towards this now, uh, early education and early intervention, they're realizing life patterns are built when you're three, when you're four, when you're five. It starts there. So if a kid is, uh, doesn't have the social skills, that, that social, um, the lack of social skills is going to translate to the rest of their life. And that's built at age three, that's built at age five, at age seven. If a kid, you know, for example, the prison system determines how many beds they're going to need based on kids not reading at grade three. Um, that's a rough indicator that they use because if a kid isn't reading at age uh, grade three, uh, the likelihood of them graduating, going to college, that's not very good. And so if we can intervene in those kids' lives, uh, in those families' lives, support, encourage them, you could change a city. Yeah, I know you'd think that the school district would be a little hesitant, but uh, like I said, you know, eight, ten years ago, uh, Fresno Unified was in such a bad spot. Michael Hansen's even referenced that recently in some of his writings, how tough of a spot Fresno Unified has come from. Uh, and so we approached uh, the principals at those schools, and honestly, we've been received with open arms. I think, you know, there's a balance for us as we mobilize churches that um, we're not proselytizing on a school day at campus. That's not our space, uh, but we're there to love and to serve. I think you have hopes of like, I'm gonna change this kid's life. And uh, it's just being faithful. It's just being somebody in their life that they can rely on. Um, you know, they ha do have a lot of people in their life they can't rely on for schedule and time. And so if you're there uh, and you're available to listen, you can really make a huge difference. So, um, you know, I think we want to see volunteers and people that are just available. They're there, they're present with them, they listen. Um, and you really realize, like, we, you know, there's, you can just make such an impact through that. It doesn't, you don't have to do anything grandiose. Being available and being present can change a kid's life. And You know, one of the stories that happened this last couple of years, at one of the Saturday sports, this kid had been coming and he's now in high school, really good at soccer, really gifted. Um, you know, as people of influence, we have connections and relationships that we can plug these kids into. And he hadn't really been thinking about high college. Um, nobody in his family had been pushing him to college. His parents were, um, you know, I think from Mexico. And so, you know, just the framework that they had wasn't, you're going to college. And uh, somebody, one of the volunteers, knew him and just had gone to the games and watched him. I think he was at Sunnyside High School. And it's like, you got to go to college. And I know, the, I know the coach over at Fresno Pacific, I'll get, you know, we can set up something, you can go try out. Um, you know, long story short, he got walked on at Fresno Pacific, ended up getting a little bit of scholarship to go to college. He's now at, uh, at Fresno Pacific um, doing college and doing soccer.